Be'ezat Hashem, Na'aseh Ben'atzliach. I want to welcome you to another session of our Tefillah 101 class as we continue our in-depth learning of the Amidah. Ba'uch Hashem, this whole series is coming to an end soon as we have already completed the actual last installment last week of Osei Shalom Ibrahim. In-depth look into the whole concept of peace. What a beautiful class. And just when we finish the entire Amidah, what do we do? Hazara. For two reasons. One, once you learn something, the rabbis instruct us that you have to go back and learn. You planted a seed, go back and sow. Reap the food, reap the fruit that you uh, planted. Don't just leave it behind. We're instructed to, re- to uh, re- uh, repeat our, or to review our learning up to 101 times so it won't be forgiven. So, so it won't be forgotten. However, even four times is said to be enough. And Baruch Hashem, as our custom in Avodat Hashem has been, that every single class we started, we always go back and do a little bit of Hazara. Notice, every time we learn, what do we do? We got to go back before we go forward. We got to go back before we go forward. Why? It counts as Hazara. It helps us remember. It helps us retain our learning. So, in general, Hazara is important, but in Da'amidah, it's mandatory. So tonight's class is actually going to be very interesting because it's going to be half halachic where we talk about all the halachot that pertain to the hazara of da'amida, which is very important. Just like we learn about every single thing in da'amida, it's very important to know what to do and what not to do during the repetition of da'amida. And while we have a repetition of da'amida, what is the need for it? Uh, where is the source for it? And once we're done with all the halachic ramifications of uh, of the, uh, of the repetition of the Amidah, what we're going to do is we're going to do a run-through from beginning to end, one bracha from the beginning all the way to the end, and we're going to include everything, all the meaning of the words, the, the, the kavana, the intention that we're supposed to have, any body movement that it's connected to it. Whatever we're supposed to do during the Amidah, we're going to do like a practice run-through it. It's not in detail, it's going to be broad strokes, because the details we did. We took every bracha, and we spent sometimes two, sometimes four hours on it on each run. So if you need to go and refresh your memory, Baruch Hashem, the catalog is filled with details. But tonight, we're just going to say, if I'm going to do an Amidah, what do I do over here? How does it feel? It's also different when you learn in depth one by one, as opposed to when you look at the whole thing in wide angle. You open up, you know, when you zoom in on something, okay, fine, you see the details. But when you go wide angle, you see the bigger picture. Tonight, I was hoping to get the bigger picture of Damida, of how one Berecha leads to the next, how one Berecha leads to the next, how they're connected and, and, and correlating to one another, as well as to see that it's a buildup, a buildup, a buildup, a buildup, a buildup. And just when you think, you know, that we, we finished the, the section of Hoda'a, or the section of Bakashot, or the section of, um, of Sheva. We see that we come to the end, to the crescendo, to the apex of the Amidah, which is Osei Shalom Mibramav, which we spent so much time on it last week. And I just want to add a little, uh, uh, you know, an additional thing at the end of this class uh, in regards to that. So before we get started, I'd like to give an honorable mention and special dedication to the following people. That this class will be to the Ilu Nishmat of David Ben Zohara, Yaniv Ben Rinam. Michelle Ben Zohar, Aviv Ben Vivi, Esther Bat Alia, Abraham Yoshua Ben Sultana, Simon Ben Alia, Mazal Bat Luna, Meir Ben Rebecca, Sultan Ben Frecha, Yitzchak Ben Sevilla, Nisim Ben Meir, Rachel Bat Bela, Yaakov Ben Tamar, Suzan Bat Shava, Yehuda Ben Aharon, Brendel Bat Meir Dov, Shalom Ben Zohar, Hana Bat Chava, Branchi Bat Brain Dov. Also, that this class will be to the Rafua Shelema of Abraham ben Zohara, Labi Rafael ben Olga, Daniel Amen. bat Mazal, Amen. Miriam bat Pesi Perina, Yaakov ben Dina, Gabriel Amen. ben Mashiach, Amen. Karen Chava bat Dona, Amen. Nir ben Yehudit, Amen. Chaya Yael Shoshana bat Chana Freidol, Lea Sarid bat Yael Shindol, Shaul Yosef ben Garaz, Amen. Nir ben Yaud, Amen. Heleni Orna bat Amen. Chen Chana. Amen. Amen. Also, that this class should be to the Zivug, Hagun, Mishosh, Mishmatam, to Inbal, Bat Jacqueline, Guy Ben Dina, Shreina Henshi, Bat Lea Gito, Amen. Eli Ben Shula, Amen. Tamar Adina, Bat Devora Miro, Amen. and Yosef Ben Sarah. Amen. Amen. Also, 
that this class will be to the general success of Avraham ben Daniel, Avraham ben Violet Chaya, Yehuda Leib ben Tova Shindel, Desiree and Avia, Yael Teppenberg and family, Joseph Dombrush and family, Judah Mendel, Dov Shmuel and Pesi Penina and family, Shalom ben Chaya Carmela. Also, just to show you, look how many people are getting involved. So many people want to be part of this tour. Our Yisachar and Zebulun sponsors, these are the people that gave the money every single week so we could have this lavish meal, the, 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 the food, the chicken, the fish, the couscous, whatever we were having, the wine, the beers, the snacks. It costs a lot of money, anywhere between $600 to $1,000 every single night. Who pays for it? These people, Shashem Baechotam, the Yisachar Zevun sponsors, we have Noam Zechariah Ben Zion. Be'ezrat Hashem, Shashem Baechotam, Be'ezamechotam, Tenu Shlom Baechotam, Amen, And also bless his, children, his wife, Yochemet Batlea, and his children, Yaakov, Zechariah, Yael, and Esther, and his mother, Rachel Batzaya, and his Amen. sisters, Galia and Dorit. Also, Zivug Hagun, Mishosh Nishmatam, Vekriya, Vekriya, Vimhera, Tidbal Bat Shaklin, Vebatven Bat Shaklin. Also, to a good friend of the class, has been sponsored from the beginning. Hanan, a good friend of ours who is always sponsored for the Rekhuaf Shelma of Janet Bat Simi, and Shlomo Ben Hana, and Tzion Ben Hana. Also, Rina and Aaron Perkel, that have been sponsoring uh, um, the entire time as well. Aharon Meir Ben Rafael Mendel, Mechabat Sacha and his work, Shlom Bayed, good chinook for his children. Also, Rina Bajuklin for good health, good chinook for her children, and may she merit to give birth to many more healthy and holy children Amen. to their children. David Shalom and Ora Alia to be healthy, Amen. blessed with good midot, Bechamat Sacha in the ways of Hashem. And should Hashem bless Amen. all of us with good mazal, Bakol Mikol Kol. Amen. Also, Amen. special Amen. thanks to a very special lady, Yehudit Ben Shabbat, a great addition to our. To our um, to our group, uh, may Hashem bless her. Berchabat zacha, bechomas seadeh, should be uh, going higher and higher. Bechokma, bina, daat, b'tura. Amen, amen, amen. Chinuch eladim v'derech Hashem. Noam and may Hashem bless Noam Elimelech, Asher Meir, Shammai ben Yehudi, and Panasa for every single person in this room. Amen. Also, Karen and David Barman. Bezat Hashem bechua shelma to Karen Chava Badona. Refuah shelma. This also a good friend. Uh, um, uh, no, uh, one second. Yeah. I already mentioned Yaakov Ben Dina. Yosef uh, Tolila. Yosef Tolila. That he is uh, uh, also been a sponsor the entire time. For Refuah shelma, the Vor Le Batrifka. Amen. Zivu Gagun to Tova Chay Batrifka. Malim Banor Bail Yved. David Mashiach Ben Alis, Belelu Nishma Daniel, Shlomo Ben Esther Gabriel, Zalek Ben Avraham Akuen, Miriam Bat Mazad, and Blanche Bat Hana Anushka. Amen. What happened to Karen Barman? Huh? What happened to Karen Barman? No, maybe just oh. refer to them, just maybe a stuffy nose or something. <laughs> and lastly, also we have this week's sponsor that has been sponsoring all of the classes of this week, Anonymous. Uh, who's sponsoring tonight's class? Refuah Shema to Shimshon Mordechai Ben Miriam, Yehudit Chaya Bat Eit Aleya, Ben Yamin Ben Chana, Yaakov Moshe Gershon Ben Zelda Rivka, Eliyahu Ben Homa, Miriam Ben Pesi Penina, Yeshua Yaakov Lem Ben Devora Miro, and Shidu Hagun to Yachid Bat Sprints, and Refuah Shalema to our good friend in the restaurant. Amen. And last but not least, all the people that are in attendance. Shashem Barechot Chem, Barechot Chem. Amen. Also, also, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do it. Also, that this class will be to the Ilu Nishmat of my grandmother, Alia Bat Rachel, that her yurt site is half ER in a couple of days. I don't know if we're going to have a class for that, but I did want to mention her because it's a few days away. Amen. And of course, to all the people on the dentist, Amen. Hashem, Amen. I, mean, Amen. I, I would like Amen. to say all your names, but then the class will be over. But <laughs> really, you know, you know who you are. I really appreciate you guys coming every single class, learning. You know, next week we're giving out diplomas right, for all the for the graduation of being, you know, uh, for all the time that we put over here. Shashem ba'echotchem, samechotchem, and pay you a thousandfold for the efforts that you've been making in order to come and learn. Let's get started. That's the most important person. You forgot her name. Sharon, I mean, your beautiful mom. All that food. And for my beautiful mom, Jacqueline, Bat Alia, the Hashem Barichotah, the Samachotah, Lankry for all the food. Thank you, Lankry. 
Mrs. Lang, for the food. Thank you so much. Amen. Long life and healthy life. Amen. Long life. Thank you, thank you. So, is this it? Okay. I don't have my notes. What do you say about that? Hopefully we'll live. Maybe we should go with the names. All right, don't worry. You know what? Tonight's all on the fly. Mishamai. Wow. Okay, let's see how we do. I'm sorry, one more thing. Please forgive me. Oh and the woman behind the husband, your wife, of course. What's the matter? Thank you your so wife. much. God bless you too. Okay. Next time you do the introductions. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Tonight's class is the Chazara. It's the actual repetition of the Amidah. The repetition of, an ami, of the Amidah is something that is done on a daily basis, both in Mincha and Arvit, I'm sorry, in Shachrit and Mincha, not in Arvit. And there are some halachic laws that one must know when they are praying. What is the proper way to interact in Tefillah when it comes to Chazara? So the first half of the class is definitely going to be uh, laws that pertain to that part of our tefillah and after that we're going to do a full run of the entire Amidah so we've got a nice night ahead of us let's get started with with Yalkut Yosef Yalkut Yosef says now once you complete the Amidah you have to repeat it completely right away I'll ask why? If I just did something, why do I have to repeat it? What's the reason for the, not only the, the fact that we have to repeat it, but it's something that the entire congregation has to do in unison. So let's see. Our sages instituted that one must repeat the, the Amidah in a loud voice. Et Obaki, in order to be Yotze, in order to have the people that are not familiar with the Amidah, to take them out of their responsibility or their their um, uh, chova, their uh, obligation. Their obligation, thank you, to, to say the Amidah. What is Misha and Obaki? Let's define that. Nowadays, so back in the days it used to be that not everybody had a book, not, not, not everybody had a press where they can go into the store and for $10 they get a Sidur, right? And $20 a really fancy one. And $100 with a leather cover, right? You don't have that. So only a few had books. Also, since they don't have books, they can't read it. Secondly, not everybody was literate. People used to work the land. Not everybody knew the words. Or sometimes they even know how to read it. So in other words, they had to activate the Shomer Ke'oneh. That they listen to the Amidah, and the fact that they hear it, it takes them out of their obligation. Also, above and beyond the, the fact that they didn't have the book, and maybe they weren't literate, there, there's some people that were completely um, disconnected in a way that they have no idea what they're doing in shul. And by the way, nowadays we have that as well. People that come into the shul and they know nothing. So what do you do with that guy? Is it, is it, is it nice to say, hey, let's check who reads Hebrew. Let's check who understands Hebrew. Raise your hand if you know nothing, right? It'd be embarrassing. So in order to avoid all that, to grab all those people that know nothing, know a little bit, illiterate, have a book, don't have a book, speak Hebrew, don't speak Hebrew, read Hebrew, don't read Hebrew, because remember, we're not living in the land of Israel, we're living in the diaspora. Learning Hebrew is sometimes the second language that we're learning, and it's not so simple, because back in the days, it wasn't, with uh, it wasn't like today that we have technology. Back in the days, it used to be that people worked the land, people were busy all day long, physical work. So in order to take all those group of people and make sure that they fulfill their obligation of prayer, the rabbis instituted a repetition of the Amidah. Yes. I have dyslexia. So I have difficulties reading in English, in Spanish, and in Hebrew. So I am very slow reading the, in the Hebrew 
So this proves that the Hazara still proves relevant today. You're, you're a prime example of that. You can't say though that someone who comes to shul doesn't know anything. Because the fact that he's already in shul, if he's there for the right purposes, means that he owes something. Meaning the, the Amidah. Yeah, yeah. Maybe he doesn't know how to go from the first Berachah to the final Berachah by heart, right? Mm. Or maybe he doesn't read Hebrew, right? Mm. So not, you know, don't, don't, let's not take it, uh, uh, in, like in general terms, is what we're saying. So if not So let's just say we go to a, a situation where everybody in the congregation reads Hebrew, knows Hebrew, even knows the Amidah by heart, and Bekiim. And this entire group of people already prayed the silent prayer. He says, even though the Shalech Tzibur has to continue the repetition of the Amidah, because we have a general rule. Even though the, the reasoning is no longer valid or reasonable, we still don't nullify the decrees of the sages. Meaning, you're going to tell me, let's do away with the repetition of the Amidah. Because the reason why they instituted it is because for people that can't read, illiterate, don't know, whatever it is that we said. So they said, okay, nowadays, every single kid knows Aleph Bet. Not only that, you know what? Before we sign up people to be members in our synagogue, we test them that they know the whole Amidah by heart. So there's no need for the for the repetition. Comes Hazal and Talas, no. Because that, that's not the way it works. Just because the, the Ta'am, the reason was, nevertheless, even though that it's not, that uh, reasoning is not valid anymore, we have a klal. You should know that things in halakha, certain times, there are reasonings that are given to us in halakha that we are prohibited from doing something, and they gave us the reason. And even though that reason is no longer valid, we still have to continue on that rabbinical decree. And it says, klal be'adenu she'af al pi she'batal hata'am, lo batla takanat chachamim. Even though that the reason got nullified, but the takana, the dictum of the sages, does not get nullified. So even though kulanu nevonim, kulanu chachamim, kulanu yodim ta'amida by heart, we still have to do what? The repetition. Bekol sheken, but don't be surprised. Even nowadays, we might have simpletons that don't know how to pray properly. The ones that are coming back for the first time, the ones that are returning, the 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 They didn't learn in the, in religious schools, so they don't know the proper way to learn or to, I'm sorry, the proper way to read or the proper way to pray. So they're not bekiim. He says, now, now he gets into the meats and potatoes for, for us. Because up until now, it was simple. In our class, we learned that there are certain things that you must do in the Amidah. And you can't pass up on it. You have to you have your, your concentration and your focus. One of those things is to make sure that you have Kavanah the entire Amidah. Oh, I can't keep concentration the entire Amidah. Oh, so at least up until uh, the, the first three Berachot. Ah, you can't do the first three Berachot. You must at least the first, which is called Brikat Avot. So let's just say you did the entire Amidah, and you know what? You had no Kavanah. You had no intention on the first, um, first Berachah. So comes the Chazera and says, do the intention of Brikat Avot. In the Chazara, it says over here, It says it could be that in the in the congregation, there's many that did not make a proper intention on the first beracha where you must have a proper intention on it. And 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 by the law, they did not uh, fulfill their obligation of prayer. But since the Shaliyah Tzibur, the cantor, he knows how to do proper Kavanah, and because he knows how to do proper Kavanah, he is taking out everybody from their obligation. Even if we stop right here, that is the greatest answer we can have for why we need a Chazara. The, the Chazan is, is Yotze, he's, he's, he's taking us out of our obligation for the thing that we might have missed, which is Kavanah on the first one. 
But Baruch Hashem, tonight we're going to have many, many more reasons of why uh, we do the Hazara. But that was a very, very practical, simple, and, and, and very impactful reason of why we do the Hazara. There's we, also a difference between reading it to ourselves and hearing it out loud. That, that this is a point that will be brought up soon. Correct. Ve'yesh l'zayir me'od that shall, we have to be very careful that the Shaliyah Tzibur has to have a lot of focus and a lot of uh, intention when he's doing the Tefillah, specifically in Birkat Avot, specifically in those two places, in, in this place of the first Birkat which is called Birkat Avot, and in the praise section of the Amidah. He says the Shaliyah Tzibur shouldn't be so focused on the tunes, he should be focused on the intention. So this is also the onus is on the cantor that understands his great responsibility, how everybody's relying on him for them to be yotze from all the kavanot of the Amidah, that he is the one that motzit harabim yedechova, he's the one that is taking all the congregation from their obligation of prayer. Alav lekaven hetev lotzit akal yedechova ki akal adatenu alav ismoku. He has to understand everybody's relying on him. No pressure next time you're Hazan, right? No pressure. But no, the whole ke- the whole keila, the whole um, tibur is relying on you to do the proper kavana, so they can be yotze in case they miss something in the different in the in the in the repetition of the amida. Another halacha. It says, Minhag Yafe, Loma Kol Bechash Adam Shomea, Baruchu Baruch Shemo, and Amen. So now we're coming to to how we participate with the with the with the Shaliyah Tzibur. He says, Baruch Ata Hashem. What do we say? <coughs> Baruchu Baruch Shemo, right? And then when he finishes the Beracha, we say Amen. So now we have two things that we have to say: Baruchu Baruch Shemo, and Amen. Baruch Hu Baruch Shemo and Amen. Which, by the way, we're doing a full class. Josan Baruch Baruch Shemo and Amen. Coming up in two weeks. Nevertheless, you have a, a Shaliyah Tzibur that doesn't know how to do the Kavanot. And what is it? He said, Baruch Atah Hashem, Chonen Adat. Wait. Baruch Atah Hashem, Baruch Hu Baruch Shemo, Chonen Adat. Amen. It's, it's a play, right? It's a ping pong. We pause. The, 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 the crowd answers and then back. What happens if this guy is zooming through it? You say Baruch Hu Baruch Shemo and he's already done and you're missing the Amen. So if you find yourself in a situation, uh, Yalkut Yosef is telling us over here, skip the Baruch Hu Baruch Shemo, pick up the Amen. Okay? If you find yourself in that situation. Furthermore, because it's it, it's uh, it, it's it's uh, something that is more hamur, it's more stringent. When you say in amen yetoma, in Masechet Brachot, it talks about amen. Okay, we'll go into the. I'm just giving you a sampling. Amen. Uh, you can't say it too fast, too slow. You got to be careful how you sound it off, so it doesn't sound like amen or amen. Not to cut out the end, not to prolong, and especially not to do an amen yetoma. Amen yetoma means, Amen. 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 So what that cantor can do, that shaliach tzibu sometimes, he puts you in a situation where you pick him up, Amen yetoma, the whole way. So you're, you're here to pick up your 90 amenim of the, uh, of the day and you're picking up uh, amen So you have to be very, very careful, okay? Another interesting halakha about the Chazara. Ha'one amen lo yagbiya kolo yotor me'amevarech. So you have sometimes people that in the, in the shul, the Chazan is saying the beracha, and you have one guy, amen! Oh, you're louder than the cantor. <laughs> It's not Derech Eretz. <laughs> Don't be louder than the cantor. Okay? And by the way, I also like to say that the Chazan needs to be loud. Sometimes you go to Chazanim, they're whispering to themselves. It's not a, it's not a, you know, a personal prayer over here. You're, you're leading the Kahal. Lead! 
Be a leader. You're up there. Lead. Lead them. Get them excited to say, Baruch Hu Shemo, Amen. Sometimes when the, when the Hazan is like Mayit, you know, everybody like, you, you don't hear nothing. Everybody falls asleep with him. That's when, when you go up there, be loud, be clear. Be, everything should be defined when you pray. So when it comes to the point where you have a, a Hazan, that let's just say says it properly, and all of a sudden you get a guy that's yelling louder than him. It's not appropriate. It's not the Echeret. Make sure you're not louder than the cantor. The only time that it is warranted, he says, when the crowd is sleeping. Let's just say, you know, it's 7 o'clock in the morning. Maybe you go to Nets. Half the people are like praying with one eye open. And then you're like, you know, and, they, and you hardly see the guy. It gadal, it gadal, shemir abba. And you hear two amenim. So one guy, you know. And everyone wakes up. Yeah, yeah, amen, amen, amen. Wake up, right? So he wakes everybody up with that big amen. That's the only time that it's warranted. Again, it's giving us proper etiquette in shul. And during the Hazara, you, sh- you should know this. Because it's very important uh, that during this time, we act properly. It says, Mutar la So in the repetition, we're, we're, we're instructed to stand in the first three. In general, well, put it, general rule, you can sit down in the, uh, in the Chazara, in the repetition. The only time that you need to get up is for two things. Kedusha and Modim. Those are the two things that you need to get up and say what you need to say during that time. However, it's a good, it says one that stands up the entire Amidah. It says over here, Tavu alav abiracha. Every time, you know, the, the uh, Rabbi Vadi Yosef says, Tavu alav abiracha. You want to pick that up. This is extra, meaning you're doing what you're doing, to, what you, to, you're doing what you're supposed to do by the letter of the law. But when you extend yourself just a little bit more, Tavu alav abiracha. The, the Rabbi says, you, are, you get more of a blessing. Why? Because you're giving honor to the Amidah. So, even though you're supposed to be standing only in uh, in Nagdisha and and Amida, I'm sorry, and Modim, nevertheless, Hamachmir Lamod bekol tefilat hachazara tavo alav beracha. Is there a shuk there in the next room? They're learning tomorrow. It sounds like a shuk though, like last well, time. <laughs> Here's a here's a halacha that we we, we <coughs> sometimes find in uh, in a in a small minyan when you're only ten people. We're very makri that this particular shul with this halacha. You should know it is when you're only ten and you have to do a hazara. What do you do? So 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 we say that you need nine and one, nine and one to answer. Right? You need nine congregants. And the Chazan counts as 10. So that means you only need 9 to answer to start the Chazara. What's the problem with 9 and 1? The problem is that everybody needs to answer. Because if not, what do you fall under? That here, here I'll, read it, I'll read the text. She'im en tisha mekavnim levrachot hashilach tzibur when you're in a minimized uh, uh, minimized minyan that only has nine people and the hazan, everyone answer because if you don't have ten people answering, then you become into God's name in vain. That's a biblical prohibition. Do you want to pick those up at eight o'clock in the morning? I don't want to do that. He doesn't need to answer. That's the chidush over here. The, the, the Hazan doesn't need to answer. It could just be the nine that answer. That's why over here we're going to start getting into the bad habits of people that people do during Amidah, during the Hazara. Do not, it's not allowed. You are not allowed to learn Torah, look at a book, study Gemara, anything, anything during Hazara. Why? Because should you be learning, and all of a sudden your mind goes off <coughs> on something, and you missed an amen, and if you get those people that talk during the Chazara, the worst kind, right? The worst kind, why? Why? Because in three weeks from now, 
when we learn about what it is to talk during shul, you won't believe it. You, first of all, you'll be scared to talk in, in shul and during the Amidah. But they say, so how do you deal with that guy? How do you deal with that guy that's talking in the middle of the Amidah? Don't say his name. Do not say his name. Say if you say his name, what happens? You're embarrassing him in public, and that's a terrible, terrible sin. It's shfichut damim. When you're malbin panim berabim, you don't do that. But you can't say, guys, please, can you be quiet? It's one guy talking. It's only one guy talking, but you're talking in plural. Rabotai, please, quiet. Why? Because you don't want to embarrass that person that is talking, but it's very, very important to take him to the side. There's a story of Rabbi Duvi Ben Shushan. He is an incredible story. He says he was talk, He was in his shul in Brooklyn, and two guys were talking in the back. So he comes to one guy over there, and you know, two of them, they're talking, and he comes to one guy, he goes to him, Ayuni, you know, pats him on the face. He goes to the next guy, boom! Oh no talking in shoe! Oh <laughs> he was so shocked. He, you know, after tefillah, the guy that got smacked in the face, comes to the rabbi, he's like, Rabbi, we were both talking. To him, you patted his face. You tell him, Ayuni, me you smack? He's like, yes. He's like, you, I see you every day for 10 years. This guy's the first time I see him. So for him, I'm gonna be some. But you, you know better. So you have to be very careful on how you tell people not to talk. It's a big problem, especially during Shabbat. <coughs> So, just to touch on this one more before we move on to a, a different book. It says, Let's say you have now uh, the Shaliyah Tzibur and he's praying the repetition of the Amidah. And he finds, he, he finds himself in a situation that a few of the ten people fell asleep. Or a few of the ten people are talking. And you can't wake up the people that are sleeping, and you can't quiet down the people that are talking. What does he do? He's in a pickle. Is he going to continue? If he continues, If he doesn't continue, what does he do? They don't want to wake up, they don't want to stop talking. So what do you do? What do you, when Shariah Tzibur realizes that the crowd behind him is problematic. He continues. Don't stop in the middle. Even though that these people are sitting behind you, they're falling asleep, they're talking. Because he's talking. And he says, if you know you're in a problematic crowd, and you know that uh, you have 10 people here, some are going to talk, some are going to fall asleep, and you don't want to be the one that says, Shem Hashem Lebatala. He says before he starts praying, he says, Hashem, I'm going to start and I'm going to hope that what I'm going to say right now, I'm going to get Amenim and Barhuba Shemu and Amenim from the Minyan and everything is okay. But if not, I'm making, I have the Kavana that all my blessings, Tiye Letfilat Nedava. Nedava is meaning I'm giving like a, 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 a it's a donation. It's a donation type of tefillah, meaning it's not uh, it's not something that is uh, uh, an obligation. It's like a it's like a give a charity. It's, a, it's the same thing. Volunteer. When you miss, huh? Volunteer. Voluntary. Correct. It's like what, for example, somebody misses mincha for a good reason. He was he wasn't able to do a uh, mincha for a good reason, and now comes arvit. So he doesn't want to lose out on the mitzvah of tefillah. So he has, an, uh, he, has, uh, he has the opportunity to make it up. How? He's able to pray Arvit two times. But what are you supposed to say before you start? He says, if I, was, if I was Hayab to pray, let this be a tefillah. And this will make up for it. But if I wasn't, if, if the reason why I didn't pray Mincha wasn't warranted as something that can be repeated, meaning there's a... If you say, hey, I'm not praying Mincha, I don't want to pray Mincha, and comes Arvit, you know what, I want to do twice. You can't. You lost it. You did that on purpose. 
But if you did it, if it was by uh, honest, right? Something happened, all of a sudden your, your child needed your attention and before you turned around, wow, it's dark outside. Okay, you are a noose. Uh, let's just say, uh, you know, you sat down to, uh, uh, you know, you sat down on the couch, you fell asleep, you woke up, oh my God, I miss Omin Khan. Okay, you are a noose, whatever it is. So, but it's like questionable. So you say, if I was, if I can make up this mincha, let this be a make up tefillah. But if it's not, let it be a tefillah nedava, right? It's like a, a voluntary prayer to make up for it, like as if I'm giving like a, an offering. Similarly, that shaliyah tibur is saying, I'll do the same thing if the guys behind me are not behaving properly. There's an additional halachic ramifications that I want to go through in on, uh, on uh, Hazrat Ashat. We said that the, the reasoning for the repetition of the Amidah is no longer valid. It's something from yesteryears, but we still have to uh, perform it because once it's a, a rabbinical dictum, we have to stick to it, even though they no longer uh, be logical. So there's a few reasons, a few reasons why we should not nullify the decree of the Chachamim. And here they are. They came up with one, two, three, four, five different reasons. One, first things first, Lo levatel takanat chachamim. The Rambam asks, "Ma'achar shetiknu chachamim, shiret shaliach tzibul fnat teva leotziet mishenu baki, va'adat rabban gamliel otzi afilu baki shulot pal benon matzmo, lule zayu chachamim notim ledvem eshurin, ve'otzichim ledok adam bebet akneset." He says, "If they would have done this for a certain period of time, because we're, the only reason why we have this law is because people are not uh, well versed in." Uh, in the Amidah, in prayer, in reading the Hebrew language. So we're going to give you 100 years, 200 years, 500 years. We're going to give you a certain period of time and then this uh, dictum expires. So they said, no. Why? Because it would bring you to a situation that before they come in, you have to check him. You know, you don't know. Do we have to do Hazara because of you? Do we have to repeat the Chazra because of you? Because everybody here knows you're the only one that doesn't know. So we have to do the Chazra just for you. So it says, in order to never embarrass another Jew, we kept it going the entire time. Secondly, the tour brings this. He says, the reason why we have the Chazra is so the, so the people can do the Kedusha. The tour says in Siman Kuv Chav Dalet that there's two reasons why we still do the repetition of the Amidah. One, in order to be to, 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 to take out the person who doesn't know how to pray properly, so the Amidah takes care of him. Secondly, so the whole congregation can do a Kedusha. There's an importance of the entire congregation doing the Kedusha in unison. Furthermore, the Rosh says, not only Kedusha, so the entire congregation can also do Modim, that everybody can do that in unison. And uh, another reason, we mentioned that earlier, for those that are praying, and you know, they, as soon as they start dying out, they're going, you know, in three minutes they're done with everything, where's the Kavana? You had no Kavana. Oh, what happens to that guy that has no Kavana in his tefillah? Baruch Hashem, he has the Chazara. Why? Because the rabbi is here praying, or the hazan is here praying, he has the proper kavana, and he's be, he's motzi, kol echad refi kavanato. Furthermore, it says that the reason why the, the repetition is so important, she tefillah bekol. It's a prayer that's said out loud. Now, what's the difference between the Amidah that's said quietly, Versus the Amidah as a prayer that says that's told that's uh, said out loud. Orchot Chaim brings Ketzadit Filat Tzibur. He says, "Explain to me how is it when the uh, when the congregation prays uh, together? Echad me mitpalel bekol rav v'akol shomin." He says, "When the congregation prays together, one leads the prayer and the rest listen." V'atfilat zicha kol bechazaka. He says, and tefillah must have a loud voice. As we saw that the prayer of the people of Ninveh, 
as it says in the Pasuk, Vaikreu el Elohim Bechazaka. How did the people in Ninveh pray for forgiveness? Bechazaka in a loud voice. From there we learn that we pray has to be in a loud voice. Mikan Talomet, Shatfilat Sicha, Bekol, Bechazaka. And furthermore, it says, Yesh Ma'ala Yeterashi Bekol Ram, Bezoi Tfilat Atsibu. He says, The higher level Tfilah is when it's in a loud voice and, and when it is with a quorum, with a tzibu, with a congregation. So we see that there's a higher level to tefillah when it's on a, uh, said in a louder voice or in, a, in unison as opposed to personally and quietly. Furthermore, the Benish Chai brings, and by way of the Ariza, he says that in Shara Kavanot, he brings this. שבחזרת התפילה חוזרים ונעשים כל התיקונים שנעשו בתפילת לחש. He says, during the repetition of the Amidah, all the rectification happens in the repetition, not in the regular Amidah. אלא שהחזרה מגעת למקום עליון וגבוה יותר מהמקום שמגעת לתפילה בלחש. The silent prayer reaches a certain level. The prayer that said out loud reaches a much higher level than the uh, silent prayer. He says, because you have to be very careful when you pray silently, you have to be careful to pray silently. Why? Because the Zohar reveals to us that, there are, uh, that a person should fear, in Tikkun Zohar it says, a person should fear not to say the Amidah with a loud voice. He says, because if you say your tefillah, your Amidah, in a loud voice, the negative spiritual uh, husks are going to cling on to your tefillah and hold on to it. <laughs> but when you say it quietly, they don't hold on to it. The chazara, since it reaches a much higher level in the heavens, those negative spiritual husks cannot cling on to it, even though that it's in a loud voice. The reason says that's why we say it in a loud voice with no fear, because they don't have the ability to cling on to it and sabotage our prayer and ruin it. Even more so, how, uh, the strength that comes along with it when 10 people do it as part of an Amidah, as part of a quorum. Can you say TV in a loud voice? Yes. A few more pieces before we go to the repetition of the Amidah. Some Musar in regards to the Amidah. He says, when you find yourself in a shul and you're praying and they come to the Amidah and all of a sudden everybody's talking. Everybody's making light of the Hazara. Sometimes it happens. All of a sudden, the you know the Hazara starts, and everybody's in private conversations. They've been waiting the entire day for this one moment of Hazara to do what? To talk to his friend about the Miami Heat, the playoffs. You know, uh, nice sneakers, nice shoes. What a watch! What are you doing today? Did you hear what happened in Israel? Good start. All of a sudden, every, all, everything happens. Dafkan Hazara. So when a person finds himself in such a situation, it says, "The matzav noan ach v'rag b'kdel nasuto." He says, "Hashem's testing you." It's your test for the day. Hashem puts you in a place where people are talking in the Amidah. What are you going to do? <laughs> he says, he wants to see if you too are going to start talking with them. If you too are going to make light of the Amidah. <laughs> he says, and that Kadosh Baruch Hu gives a person a test, meaning Hashem sends us test on a daily basis. One of the tests that you're going to have is that you're going to be around people that talk in the middle of the Amidah, and it's up to you whether you're going to participate. Are you going to talk during the Amidah or not? You're being tested. Are you obligated to correct them? Absolutely. You have to do the, right way. The, other, the other day we were talking about what's the right way to rebuke. They said that we live in a generation that you can't rebuke people. You rebuke somebody, they hate you. You rebuke somebody, they tell you all. Then when you tell somebody, they tell you what's wrong with you. So what do you do? So you know you start off, uh, you start off, you know, neutral. You smile at them. You be nice. You know. <laughs> you do a second time, right? Maybe 
you know, you catch him outside. I don't you don't understand. A few weeks ago, I mean, it's like so many, it's unbelievable. Just a few weeks ago, I was listening to this class from Sharon Nankri about the uh, talking during Damidah. You know what he said? He said that sometimes God tests you with people talking around you. And that's my test. And I wanted to pass the test, and I wanted you to pass the test with me. In three weeks, you're going to hear what the, the, the gravity of people that talk in Shul, what it is. I don't want to mention it right now because it will hijack this class. But it's one of the worst things that a person can do is talk in Shul. So to make a long story short, you start soft. You share with them something that you learned like that because you learned it. You, that's why you're Mekayim it. Then maybe they'll do that also. And then, and after, after a while, sometimes you've got to come down with the hammer. It all depends. Usually the, the rabbi isn't a place to do that. Sometimes there's people in the community that can do that. But general is a first approach. Shag it! Uh, they're not going to take it. They, I don't, I don't really care what people think, so I usually yell a kavana. And usually it gets most people, whether they like me or not. Okay. But I mean, you know, when you try making nice faces, when you try and say, they, they look at you like you're retarded. It has to start that way, with their, whatever they think. It has to start that way. But here's an interesting thing. God is testing you with the people talking around you. Are you going to fall for that trap? Or are you going to hold up? That was nice. Another one. The Ariza says... The Riza says that the Aniya, the, the, the answering of the Shaliyah Tzibur in the, in the, in the Chazara, Yesh ba ma'ala atzuma al tefillat al-achash. It's on a much, much higher level than the silent prayer. As it says in Masechet Brechot on the 32nd page on the second side, Hitpalel velo ne'ena yachzor v'hitpalel. The Gemara tells us, you prayed for something and you didn't get answered, you know what you should do? Pray again. The Ariza says, the Gra is actually uh, uh, chiming in on the Ariza. He says, What? Hitpalel velo neena, yachzor vitpalel, da hainu chazrat ashatz. The bat luya aniata tfila. He says, You know what the, your, your, your prayer being answered is hinged on? The chazara. Again, hitpalel velo neena, that's the lachash. Yachzor vitpalel, that's the chazara. He says, when, do you, when are you going to get your prayers answered? When you have the kavanah during the Chazara. How? This is huge. This is a, this, if you understand what was just said over here, it's unbelievable. Why? We tune out. In the place where we're supposed to reap, we're supposed to get everything, everything that we prayed for. What do we do? We tune out. We space out. We look. We laugh. We, laugh, we talk. The guy is saying over here, that you, you misunderstood the Gemara in, in Berachot. The Gemara Be'achot says, Yitpalel velo ne'ena, that's your lachash. Yachzor v'yitpalel, dehaynu, yachzor v'yitpalel ne'ena. When you go back and you pray again, you will get answered. When's the second time you go? Right after. It's like as if you prepared the, the land, and the second one is come and pick the fruit. So that's why during the Amidah, the, 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 the Chazara, it's very, very important to stay focused. I, you know, sometimes I see people in the Chazara, they're like this, they're reading every line. I was like, he just read it. Did he miss a word or something? Like, why is he looking back again? And I didn't realize, and I'm saying, wow, Kona Kavod, uh, this guy is a uh, high-level tefillah. Achidah Omer Rezeh. Huh? Achidah Omer Rezeh. Achidah says that. The Achidah to go back follow, line by line. Do, yeah. Chazak. So he sees over here that, that the repetition of the Amidah is the, the answering of everything that you prayed for is hinged on how you behave in the Chazara. Furthermore, he says, if you have a proper intention during the time of the Chazara, it counts for you like you pray twice. Rabbi Yonah, in Igeret HaTshuva, says, When the Shaliyah Tzibur prays, you must answer Amen on every single Beracha. And also, when you're saying Amen, don't be like one of these automatic. Amen! 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 What did you say Amen for? Was it for Refuah? You said Amen for Geula? You said Amen for, for Parnassah? What did you say Amen for? You're not to say, allowed to say Amen if you don't know what, what the Bracha is for. And by the way, it's, it's, a, it's a Halakha also. When somebody is saying a Bracha, if you don't know what they're saying, what are you, what are you uh, concurring? Uh, amen. Amen on what? What did he say? You're saying amen. If you didn't hear properly what he's blessing on, you can't say the amen. You can't just say like, 
random amenim. You have to be very, very careful with the amenim. So similarly, in the Amidah, don't space out and just say Amen, Amen. Oh, he said Amen on Refaenu. He said Amen on Gaolenu. You know, Al-Aminim. Oh, each one, I know what I'm saying Amen to. Have Kavana. Ve'esh lo bezeh, schal kaful. And when you have Kavana, when you answer Amen, and you know what you're answering Amen for, you have a double reward. So, so what do we learn from here? Im itpalalta ve'lo kivata libcha. Let's just say you did the entire Amidah, zero Kavana. What do you do? Vechazata v'itpalata, tem usef shedachan ishmad. He says, when you go back and you, if you go back and you pray again, know that the second tefillah that you did because you wanted to do the Kavana, it got answered. So Rav Chaim Evolojin says, ha-mitpalel ve'lo ne'ena yachzo v'itpalel al chazarat ha-shatz. V'ikavem tefillat ha-shatz, ki shem ha-tefillah mekubelet yoteh. So he says like this, the entire tefillah, no kavana. In the Chazara, you're saying Amen, and you know what you're answering Amen to, it counts as kavana, and the tefillah goes as if you did kavana. It's a hack. It's a hack. We just found a way to get kavana on the Amidah. Oh, I can't do it on my own. No, no, no problem. Catch the, catch the Chazara. When he says about Refua, Amen. When he says about Geula, Amen. When he says about the, the building of Bet HaMikdash, Amen. And the fact that you have an understanding, a kavanah, that you're answering amen to that specific thing, it counts for you like tefillah with kavanah. Again, another reason for repetition. These are all. These are all like, you know, we, even though it's, we, we said, the, 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 if they ask you why we do, why do we do hazara, it's a rabbinical dictum that we don't get nullified, even though the, the reason is no longer valid. But what we learned tonight, that there's many, 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 many reasons of why we still do it and how many things we benefit from just by doing the Chazara. May I ask a question? Yes. Why when we say the Shema, besides the first part of it, do we read it together? And why, when, if that's the only tefillah from God, and then the, the Shemona Yisrael, we do once and then the, the, the Chazan does it again. So first of all, Shema Yisrael is, is, is the uh, Kabbalat Ol Machut Shamayim. We're accepting the yoke of heaven <coughs> together as one. So that's something that we have to do as a nation. So that's something that we do in unison. It's also biblical. Tefillah happens to be rabbinical. So on Sheikh Neset Agdola, the, the man of the great assembly gave us a, a whole map on how to go about Tefillah, which one of them is the silent and then the the repetition. The, the there is a, a rabbi called Naftali Zeva Cohen Leibowitz. Such a strong point he's going to make right now. He says he saw in the yeshiva one of the avrichim talking in the middle of Hazara. He comes to him after tefillah. He says, "I heard that you eat hametz in Pesach." He said, "I'm sorry. I'm sorry." I heard that the Chit Hametz uh, uh, on the last day of Pesach. The Avrech goes to him, Are you kidding me? That I should eat Hametz on the last day of Pesach? That's an Isur de Rabbanan. That's a rabbinical prohibition. I would never do such a thing. So he says, So what's the difference with talking during Amidah? That's also a rabbinical prohibition. <laughs> Not talking during Amidah is like eating Hametz on the last day of Pesach. Zeisur de Rabbanan, Zeisur de Rabbanan. What a smack in the face. You just have to redefine it. That's why also, sometimes, <coughs> you know, I see people, they wash the dishes with a sponge. You know, it's sochet. Ah, it's nothing, it's dishes. What, you want the dishes to stay dirty? Would you light fire on Shabbat? Has shalom. It's the same. It's the same. It's one of the lametet melachot. Just like you wouldn't turn on the light on Shabbat, is the same way you don't squeeze the sponge on Shabbat. Sometimes you just have to like redefine to people how 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 uh, uh, grave it is to do such a uh, such a sin. Speaking during Hazara is a rabbinical isur similar to eating uh, uh, hametz on the last day of Pesach. Is that the same for a live sponge versus synthetic sponge? Synthetic is permissible because okay. it doesn't it doesn't uh, absorb. absorb. What? Yeah, yeah. There's a special yeah. Shabbat sponges. This is the last thing that I saw I want to share with you. He says, 
בוודאי מה שביקשו לא ניתן להם, ומה שאדם ניתן מהם. For sure, what they're asking, they're not getting. And whatever's in their hand, take away. What does that mean? It says that when we go and pray, there's sometimes we, we yield great results. We actually get what we pray for. You finish the filah, and Hashem, the Bedin Shemala, the angels deliver it. You're walking out of the shul, nine o'clock, the Berachah is in your hand. Your tefillah, your tefillah yielded results. You did it. Kol kavod. But they're saying, but you know what happened? Right after tefillah that you did such a great tefillah and you got your uh, prayers answered, you spoke during the Chazara. So what they say? Gam im hitpalel karaui vekiven betfilato, he prayed properly and had the proper intention. Umin ha-shamayim vayeskimu latet lo, and they agreed in the high heavens to give him what he prayed for. Aval diber bishat chazarat ha-shat. Aval lo kiven, and he didn't have intention to follow with the shaliyak tzibur. Itelu mimeno ma shek vayeskimu latet lo. He says they're going to take from him what they agreed to give him. And what they already have, they're going to take away. Meaning, what you were supposed to receive, take it away. He lost it. And what you already have in your hand, that gets taken as well. So it's so damaging, so damaging that three, four minutes of silence to the, to the rest of the day. Or to the tefillah. What did your tefillah do to you? What did the tefillah do to you? Nothing. He just wants to help you. The tefillah just wants to connect you to God, just to bring you, uh, to bring uh, the, 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 the abundance through your pipeline from the Shemaim here to this world. And who's sabotaging it? That's it. You ruined it. That two second interaction. That was some halachic and, and musar introductions. To, to the Chazara. Okay, Bezat Hashem na seven at I don't know. I don't want to go too long. Maybe. Okay, we'll, we'll give it a shot. Let's see. So, what I want to do right now. It's very, very uh, quiet, but it's good. Before it starts, the Amidah, from beginning to end, broad strokes of what we're supposed to think. What we're supposed to do from beginning till end. So we can have a full run, a full understanding of the Amidah. Okay. Before we get started with the Amidah, remember what we learned the first 10 classes of how you're supposed to prepare yourself for tefillah? Do a quick review on that. Being the first 10, praying in the Minyan, have a fixed location, a fixed spot where you pray, making sure that your body is clean, making sure that you're, uh, that you are, that you are ready to, to be part of the first 10 that are, are, that are there and that you are, have, uh, that you don't just rush into tefillah, that you come a few minutes before in order to settle your mind and to get started. And we spoke about all the different things that you have to do. And I'm just going to fast forward to the Amidah. We came to the concept of Lismoch Geula. I can't start the Amidah without mentioning how important it is to focus on the first, uh, on, the, the, on the last two pages, I'm sorry, the two pages before the Amidah. In general, you have to have focus on the entire Tefillah. And of course, you have to have focus in the, in the Shema. Right after Shema, those, that last two pages those are, that's the section that's called the Smoch Geula Letfila. Over there, if you pay attention to the wording, it just talks about the greatness of God and how He saved us from being a slave nation and took us out from slavery and bondage from Egypt and how the, the whole process of the Exodus and how eventually we, we, you know, we, we became a nation, we became free, we got the land of Israel, He saved us, He took care of us, He did everything. It's like all the miraculous things that God did for the Jewish people from the beginning of time up until now. Remember. Remember, that's the God that you're praying for. That's the one that you're about to step and do tefillah. Why? Remind yourself on a daily basis that God is great and He's able to do all these miracles. He did it in the past 
and he can do it. He can do it today, and he can do it for you. That's why you have to have this focus right before Amidah. The smoke geulah tefila. What am I saying? You're talking about the greatness of God, in order to remind yourself that God can be great in your life today. The same way that He split the sea, can split the sea for you. The same way that the Jewish people be bizat hayam, they became rich overnight. Same thing could happen to you. The same way that Hashem heals the sick could happen to you. We remind ourselves that God is great and all powerful, and whatever He He did in the past is available to me on an individual basis today through this tefila. And that's why it's called the smoke geula le tefila. And then we start our tefila. And tefila starts when Adonai sevatai tiftah ufia gitiratech Hashem. Open up my lips so I can begin to say to praise you, pray, begin to pray to you. And we said, why do I need to ask God to open up my lips? Because there's not a single thing in this world that we don't need God's help for. From the beginning of the tefillah, we're giving all power to God. That everything, everything that we're going to ask for is because the only one that can give it to us is a kadosh baruch So because He is the one that is all powerful and all and, and, has, and is able to give every single thing in our lives, that even for me to open up my lips and ask for it, He's in control of that. Plus, we also say, Hashem sefatai tiftah ufiya giti latecha. Open up my lips and make sure that I pray for the right things. Because sometimes we pray for the wrong things. Sometimes we think what we want is what we need. Hashem, open up my lips and make sure that what I'm going to say is the right thing. That I pray for the right thing and I, add, I request the right things. That Hashem should help me in my tefillah. I'm about to pray to you. Help me pray to you. We spoke about the structure of the Amidah. The first three and the last three are always going to be the same. The middle is always going to be different. In the tefillah Shmonai say, we said that the first three are Sheva. They are praise, and they consist from three berachot, avot, gevurot, kedusha, and those are the ones where we praise God. The final three berachot are hodaa, which we uh, we are we are grateful and thankful to Hakadosh Baruch Hu. And the middle berachot are bakashot, the uh, the request that we make on a personal level and on a collective level as a nation. So when we start, there's like a body, uh, a separation to the. A special construction to the Amidah, and the first three are called Shevach, and that's what we're going to get started right now. That we're going to praise God, and over here, you don't ask for anything. Over here, you're just praising God. Baruch Ata Hashem. Over here, so first of all, before we get started, what is the Kavana as soon as you start Amidah? You're saying, I'm stepping into a Tefillah, and we take our right foot first right, left, right, right. We step in with the right foot, we go with the left foot, and then we come back together. So we start with the right and we end with the right. That's how we step into a tefillah. Why? Because the king is here. So we're stepping into the king. You're not standing in front of him. And same way when you go back. So you go one, two, three, you lock up. Your, your uh, intention is, my tefillah is going from here to Israel. Israel, Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Bet HaMikdash. Bet HaMikdash, Kodesh HaKodeshim. Kodesh Kodeshim, behind the parochet, we wear the two keruvim. Right there is where I'm sending my tefillah, because there is Shara Shamayim, the pipeline that all the tefillot go up to the heavens, and all the berachot also come down. So we're praying to that area. So when you pray, the kavana is, is this is where my tefillot are going. Give it an address. Then you say, Hashem sefadai diftach ufir getilatecha, and you start. Baruch ata Hashem. Let's start body. Baruch, right? So you say, Baruch, I'm sorry, Baruch, Ata, you, 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 you prostate, you bow down, full, your whole back is down, and you pick up your head when you say Hashem. So you bow down, and when you start to say, Baruch, I'm sorry, when you say Hashem, so it's like this, Baruch, you bend your knees, Ata, you bend your back, Hashem, you lift up your head, and that is what your body needs to do when you say, Baruch, Ata, Hashem. What is Baruch, Ata, Hashem? Baruch, you're the source of all the blessings. Ata, the one that created the world from Aleph, Ataf, with the five letters of Mansapah. Hashem, you're the one that created the world with the Hebrew alphabet. But we also learned that Ata, we speak to HaKadosh Baruch Hu Ata. How can we talk to the all-merciful God, the creator, the king of all kings, as you? Baruch, Ata, right? We, when we say, uh, you know, when we speak to the rabbi, Kvod uh, Rav, right? When we speak to uh, the president, oh, Mr. President. When you, when you speak to a king, oh, your, 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 your excellency, right? You go speak to a judge, your honor. When you speak to God, it should be what? 
the king of all kings, the Melech Machia Lachim. What do we say? Ata. Baruch Ata. Blessed you. You is very informal. It's almost, we'd say, a lack of respect. It's like directly speaking to Gosh Baruch Hu, not second, not second or third uh, person. But Hashem allows us to talk to Him that way. Baruch Ata Hashem, that we're so close that we could actually say, Baruch Ata, blessed you are Hashem. And when we look at Hashem, look in the Sidur, God's name that is used for God is Yudke Vavke. Yudke Vavke is God's name for mercy. Inside Yudke Vavke, notice on the last letter of He, there's the word Amonai, Aleph, Dalet, Nun, and Yud. So we see that God's name in the Sidur is two. Yudke Vavke, God's name for Chesed, and God's name for Din, which is Adnut. So we say, Baruch Atah Hashem, we have to have the, the, the intention that Hashem runs the world with strict judgment and loving kindness. That's how He runs the world. And that's the intention of Baruch Ata Hashem. Elokeinu, He is our God. And by the way, Rabbi Shimshin Pinkus said, what's the most beautiful word in all of Tefillah? Elokeinu. Rabbi Shimshin Pinkus said the most beautiful word in Tefillah is Elokeinu. Why? First of all, you believe that there's a God. Secondly, He's your God. There's not... Huh? So imagine what he says, the most beautiful word in the whole tefillah is Elokeinu. One, you know that there's a God. Two, he's yours. That he's your God. So Baruch Atah Hashem Elokeinu. Now we had the whole uh, lesson about Elokim. Elokim is not gods, but rather powers, angels that have powers. It's Kohot. So Baruch Atah Hashem Elokeinu, that we say, that Kadosh Baruch Hu, Baruch Atah Hashem, Adon HaKol Haya Hove V'yed, that Hashem is, was, is, will be. Elokeinu is... Uh, the uh, the the kavana of it, of it is takif bale cholit ubala kochot kulam. He's the one that is has the power over everything in this universe. There's not one thing that's not under the control of God. So that's Baruch Ata Hashem Elokeinu, our God. Velokei Avotenu, the fa- the the God of our forefathers. Elokei Avraham, Elokei Tzchak Yaakov. He's the father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Stop. You just said he's our God. Why do I have to say that he's the God of Abraham and Yitzhak and Yaakov? Because just like Yitzhak had Abraham and he could have said, My father, he checked it out. There is a God. I believe what my father said and would have been good enough. No, Yitzhak went on his own journey to say, No, this is my God. Yeah, my father taught me that there is a God, but I have my personal journey that is okay, Yitzhak. Comes Yaakov and says, You know, my father is Yitzhak, Akedat Yitzhak, he checked God, he gave him 100, five-star rating, Kadosh Baruch Hu, you're the best. And my grandfather, he's the one that discovered him. He brought monotheism to the world, Avraham Avinu. I don't have to check nothing, I rely on my father, and I rely on my grandfather. No, Yaakov says, Elohe Yaakov, I myself also went on a journey, I also found out about God, and he's my God too. So he's my God. He's my father's God, and he's my grandfather's God, and he's also Elokei Avotenu, all our patriarchs, meaning we all must have our own personal journey to find God. It's great that our parents teach us about God. It's great that our parents teach us about uh, Torah, Mitzvot, Masim, Tovim, Hagim, all that. That's great, but never, 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 never skip out on your personal journey to know God. And that's why it says over here, the Almighty God, the one that is strong and awesome. Strong what? He can lift a thousand pounds? No. Strong. We say that we anger God so much every day. We go against God so much every day. Not just Jews, the entire planet. He can be so angry at us, but what does he do? He holds himself back. That's a gibor. Somebody who, everybody's going against his ways. He's the one that's giving life to everyone. He's being angered by all his creations. And what does he do? He lets us live. He gives us air. He gives us vision. He gives us food. He gives us money. He gives us children. He gives us happiness. As the gibor hakoveshet itzor. We said that Hashem, he's a gibor because he overpowers his anger. Shalom, Shalom. Also, um, about the, the forefathers, it said that Moshe, when they meet the uh, God, who, who are you? He said, I'm uh, the God of the forefathers. Correct. Yeah. 
El Elyon, the Supreme God, the Supreme Being that is above every single creation. Gomel Hasadim Tovim. He is the one that repays people and their acts of kindness. He's in charge of everything in the world. And he will never forget the, the kindness of the forefathers of Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. And he brings the Redeemer to the sons of the sons of the patriarchs because they deserve it? No. Leman Shemo. He's doing it for his namesake and with love. By the way, we just said that halakhically you got to have a kavana at least in Birkat Avot. So when you start the Amidah, you must put a mental note. Hashem sefatai tiftach ufia gitilatecha. 30 second countdown. I'm not moving from this paragraph for the next 30 seconds. When you know that you're going to spend 30 seconds on this paragraph and you can't go faster than that, then what you do is you go slowly. Pay attention to the commas. Pay attention to the pauses. Pay attention to what you're supposed to have the kavanah because if you don't have the proper intention on this, your tefillah doesn't count. You have to go and try to find all these things now with the hazara, the 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 the, the, the hazan is being, uh, you know taking you out of your obligation. But if you want to do the thing properly, what you do is right here you stop and you say, Baruch Atah Hashem. And you do all the kavanot of Yudke Vavke, Nadnud, Din and Chesed, Elokeinu, He's the one that has all the powers. He's the father of our patriarchs. Abraham, Elo Yitzchak, Yaakov, Abraham, Chesed, Yitzchak, Din, Yaakov, Tiferet, Ha'el Hagadol, the one who, with how we anger him, and he still is, oh, he overpowers his anger for us. What a great God, what a big God. Hagibor Vanura, the one that is, has, that is awesome. El Elyon, the supreme beam. Gomel Hasadim Tovim. Every time that there's a comma, stop. Give a little bit of thought and thinking about what is being said over here. After this, me, me, go. Not a problem. You shouldn't. You shouldn't. But in the bare minimum, in the bare minimum, slow down over here. This, and once you know that you're taking 30 seconds on it, it sets the tone for the rest of the Amidah. As a matter of fact, we also learned what happens if you, uh, you know, you're supposed to have uh, uh, Kavanah for the entire Amidah, but what happens if you don't have Kavanah on the entire Amidah? Wherever you catch yourself, jump back in. Don't say I lost the first one, it's over. The minute you catch yourself, on, on the 12th Berakha, on the 16th Berakha, I'm, I'm back. I spaced out, I'm back, and get that, and get the Kavana at least for that Berakha that you skipped out. But nevertheless, we have to stop over here and do it slow. Hashem brings the Mashiach in the name, in the, for His namesake, and He does it Behava, because He loves us. Why is Hashem going to bring Mashiach at the end of days? Because He loves us. Be'ahava. Melech, Ozer, Umoshia, Umagen. He's a king that helps, that redeems, and protects. Ozer is when we ask for help, he helps us. Moshia, he, he, when we don't ask for help, and he helps us anyways. Umagen, when he protects us without us even knowing. Baruch Ata Hashem, Magen Abraham. And we, once again, Baruch Ata Hashem. Magen Abraham, the protector, the shield of Abraham. And here you got to think, oh, Abraham. Imagine being Abraham, the first person to start promoting God in the world. He had nobody. Everybody turned on him. His own father turned him into Nimrod that threw him into the furnace. He had nobody. Who did he have? Him and God. Right here, Sebuch HaTashem, Magen Abraham. Me too, me and you, Hashem. It's just me and you. The same way it was just you and Abraham, it's me and you. And the same way you protected Abraham, you're going to protect me as well. This is a Muna building exercise. All these berachot, if you would start to dig in. You are the only one that has all the power and eternal strength that nobody else can have. Nobody else has the strength of God. How do we know that? The next word. It gives life to the dead. Anybody know how to bring somebody back from the dead? Nobody. Nobody can bring somebody back from the dead, only God. And God is going to do it on a wholesale level in the time of Mashiach, when it's going to be the resurrection of the dead. That you're going to give a big Yeshua, a big salvation to all the dead. And we have over here the supplication, summer, winter, Maureen Natal, bring down the dew. Mashiach Baruch Maureen Geshem, bring back the wind and the, and the rain. You're the one 
that supports people with kindness, not because they deserve it. You just give it because it's your uh, your, your 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 benevolence. For example, a lot of people that are now not going in the way of Hashem. They're not going in the way of Hashem. They're not keeping Torah. They're not eating kosher. They're not keeping Shabbat. They're not walking old ladies across the street. They're bad guys. Yet Hashem tomorrow is going to give them air to breathe, vision to see money in their bank account, food in the refrigerator, gas in their car. Why? They don't deserve it. That's right, they don't deserve it. But God is mechalkel chayim bechesed. Know that about God. God is, sustains people out of, out of His kindness. What's going to be with that guy? We pray for him and he'll come back. But there is a reality that there's, uh, there's millions, if not billions of people that don't deserve a fraction of what they have in their life. It's just the, 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 the goodness of a Kadosh Baruch Hu that they're all living off of. He brings the dead back to life. Who are the Metim? They say that uh, there's a few people that are considered dead. One of them is somebody who's poor. Somebody who's poor is considered like dead. So above and beyond the fact over here that we think about the, you know, uh, when my father comes back, my grandfather comes back, my great-grandfather back, I'll see Moshe, I'll see Aaron, I'll see Avram, Yitzhak, Yaakov, I can't wait for the resurrection of the dead. But also the resurrection of the poor people, the people that don't have money, that are considered dead. Hashem. It's tough financial today, but I know that you are mechayem etim. You pick up the poor and you bring them back to life. Anybody who has less than 200 zoos is considered, anybody who's considered poor, nechshav kemet. That's why if you remember, Yaakov was, uh, uh, was chased by Elifaz. He says, Abba told me to kill you. My father Esav told me to kill you. He says, but I'm your teacher, I'm your uncle. He says, I can't. He says, but remember what I taught you? that a, a poor man is considered like dead? He's like, yeah. He's like, so rob me. Take everything. He took everything from Yaakov. He put him on the status of dead, and he lived. So we see over here also, pick up the people that are poor. You're going to bring the people back from the resurrection with great mercy, and also you bring the people that are in, in poverty, you lift them back up with great mercy. So mech noflim. You are you, you the people that fall. You're there to for them to lean on you, or for them to pick you. Pick up the fallen. Who are the fallen? The ones that are spiritually fallen. The ones that fall off the derech. It's not so easy sometimes to be in the religion. Sometimes you want to be a big tzaddik, but you fall. You look in social media. Maybe you didn't. You weren't so careful with the uh, with the food that you're eating. Maybe you didn't keep Shabbat properly, so you fall. Hashem is somech noflim. Pick up the ones that spiritually fell. Cholim and heals the sick. And, and by the way, Cholim uh, heals the sick. Umatir asurim. He frees the ones the bound, that are in bondage. Bound. Now keep in mind, these first three berachot, we can't say, we can't personalize it at all. These three berachot, you just have to say them because they're sheva. However, there's a hack, right? When we get to the berachot, the bakashot, what happens? It becomes personal. We start asking for ourselves, and we start asking for Am Yisrael. So the menacing angels come and say, let me grab this beracha. What is this guy asking for? They take it straight to court, they open up the books. Oh, he wants a million dollars, or he wants a zivug, or he wants a, a parnasa, all this. No, sorry, this, that, that. They chop it down, you don't deserve it. These first three berachot, they're not allowed to touch it. So what do you do? You don't say words, but you sneak thoughts in here. When you say, Rofei Cholim, Helena, Orna, Bat Chen Chana, in my mind. Yaakov ben Dina, Amram ben Zohara. In my mind, I, in, the, in the area that's protected, that can't be touched by the menacing angels, I deposit a thought about that. Similarly, Matir Asurim. Uh, Matir Asurim, who is the ones that are in bondage? <laughs> who is the ones that are being captives? Oh, we only have 200 in Gaza right now. So have the thought. The Matira Surim, free up the ones over here. Why? Because if you ask for it later, they say, who are you to pray? You know, you, 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 we, we're not going to accept you to feed out because of this and that and the other. But if you put it over here, it's untouchable. So it's good to pray for the Fua and good to pray for the people that are in bondage or people that are, uh, uh, that are uh, jailed uh, for their freedom. Der Chagav, Matira Surim also said, there's people that are drug addicts, food addicts, gamblers, 
alcoholics, they're, they're also in jail. So when we say material suim, we pray for those people also to break away from their, uh, from their uh, 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 habits. From their habits. And he keeps his promise to the ones that are sleeping in the ground, meaning the dead, the ones that are going to come back in the end of days. Who's like you? Who has your power? Who has the ability to bring people back from the dead? Melech, a king. Memit, that, uh, that ki not kills, but uh, that allows life to be in a form where people die. And they're able to come back. And bring back people to life. People die in there, and you're the only one who's able to bring them back. Umatzmiach Yeshua, and you are the one that is able to give, uh, give uh, not matzmiach to give uh, forth to bring forth the salvation of the Jewish people, especially the ones that are passed away that are dead, because you think that nothing can be done for them. God is the one that's going to bring them that back. And you are trustworthy to be the one to bring back people from the dead. Blessed you are God, the one that uh, that, uh, uh, re, uh, that brings back the dead. Reincar not reincarnation, uh, resurrection. Also, to the people that are poor, bring them back. All the people that are on the status of uh, dead, bring them back. I'm not going to do the whole Amidah, I'm sorry. I'm only going to do the first three, so this is the end. We'll probably do the rest of the Amidah a different time, maybe next week. But I just want to do this last section. We'll go to Kadosh, 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 and we'll be done. Here, Mechaya Mitim, since we're in the rep in learning the repetition of the Amidah, then we are come to Nagdisha. Nagdisha is something that's very interesting because what do we say amen and we take three steps forward how do we take the three steps forward once again right, right leg first left leg second right leg third when we come back and, and we start to say we're going to exalt you and we're going to praise you like the pleasant voice of the heavenly uh, angels the seraphim Hameshaleshim lecha kedusha, the one that say that that do kedusha on three levels. We said that there's three levels of angels, and each one says the first level kadosh, second level kadosh, the third level kadosh. Meshaleshim lecha kedusha. It's three different sects of angels. Each one says kadosh separately. Vehen katuv aliyad neviach. And where do we get this from? If you go into the prophets, it's brought over there. I believe it's in. Uh, uh, Yeshaya, maybe. Not three times a day? No. It's three sects of angels that say it, Kadosh, uh, once each one. So here's the first one. What do you do over here? When we say, Do you go left, right, or right, left? So here we'll just give a, a, I'll give a little bit of a halakha. When we get to Nagdishah, when we say Bekara Ze El Zebamar and we and we turn to one angel and to another angel and we say together in unison, that means that you have an angel on the right of you, and you have an angel on the left of you, so you turn to your right first and to the left second in Nagdisha. Which is the complete opposite in um, in Ose Shalom Ibrumav. When we step away from God, we're facing God. So we turn left first, because it's God's right. And mm -hmm. then we go right, it's God's left. So notice, a lot of times people don't know. You look at shul, it's like wipers. Everybody's going in different directions. Mm -hmm. But in reality, if you know what you're doing, you know there's an order to it. Chazal mm -hmm. tell us, when you come to Nagdishah, it's right, left. Uh, right first and left second, because you're turning to the angel that's on the right, and angels on the left. And Ose Shalom, you turn... You start on your left side first because you're facing God's right hand. Because you always, there's an yan with right, right all the time. Kadosh, 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 Hashem Sevad Meluchatz Kebodot. The whole world is filled with God's uh, uh, presence. And all of them in unison are praising God. And they all say, Baruch Kebod Hashem Im Komo. Blessed Hashem from His place, from His throne of glory. And as it is said in the prophet, Hashem is going to rule forever and ever in Zion for generations and for eternity. Hallelujah. And you should know that we, when they said it, well, I'll say it over here, Atakadosh. And I'll, I'll conclude with this Atakadosh, you are holy. 
Veshimcha Kadosh. Your name is holy. Ukdoshim. And the holy ones. Who are the holy ones? In God. The we, just, we just did Kedusha. Who are the holy ones? Angels. The, the angels. People. The Jewish people. The Jewish people. Beautiful. 50 and 50 make 100. When we say, <laughs> Ata Kadosh, you are holy. Veshimcha Kadosh, your name is holy. Ukdoshim and the holy ones. Who are the holy ones? The angels are holy and the Jewish people are holy. We're both considered Kedoshim. Ukdoshim, Israel va Malachim, Bechol Yom Yaluch Asela. Together, the holy ones in the high heavens and the holy ones below every single day praise you for eternity. Baruch Atah Hashem HaEl HaKadosh. You are the holy God. Here we conclude the first section of the Amidah, which is Shevach. And it's enough for tonight. Next week, what we'll do is we'll do the entire repetition only, and we will go back over here, and I'll give another layer. You think there's no? You think we used up all the chidushim? No. Another layer on the first three berachot, and then we'll go to the rest of it. And uh, and uh, uh, fortunately, and Baruch Hashem, we do need two lessons for the Chazara. Baruch Hashem, we're not in a rush. We're in a rush. We've only done this 48 weeks. We're not in a rush, right? Shashem, Baruch Hashem, Sameach Hashem. We'll see it again next week.